Continuing coverage tonight, we are days away from Super Tuesday when voters in 14 states, including Texas, will decide who appears on the ballot in November. To talk about what's brewing in the nation's capital ahead of the elections and other DC news, we're joined now by two special guests in the studio. Congressman Louis Gohmert is here. He joins Neil Barton. Trent, thank you. I tell you, it's so nice to be introduced because usually I'm the one doing all the introductions. Exactly. So Trent, thank you very much for that <laughs> warm hello and howdy. Thank you for being here, Congressman. <laughs> There's a whole lot to talk about right now. Yeah. We are in election season, but one thing that really drew some heat this week on Capitol Hill and across the nation, we started off here with the Emmett Till anti-lynching bill. And so pretty much that was put forth by Congress, mainly, and, and, and tell me if I'm wrong, because this is just what I have read, mm -hmm. is sort of an act of togetherness, symbolism of saying the United States government is against lynching, and of course we, we should all be, mm -hmm. but you are one of four congressmen that voted against it. But the main reason, what I have read on my research is you said that the um, the punishment in this bill didn't go far enough. Well, actually, we had voice voted the bill, the original bill, out of Judiciary Committee. I'm on, yeah, and debated it and and uh, voted it out, but it had a life sentence as the maximum punishment. Mm -hmm. And I pr I really prefer uh, our criminal law here in Texas. It's so much harsher. Yes, yeah. you can get the death penalty for a lynching like, uh, in effect, it was a lynching down in Jasper when uh, Bird. James Byrd yeah. was, was killed. And I thought, from all I read and heard, that the death penalty was totally appropriate. Yeah. But some said that J James Byrd case is the reason we need a federal hate crime law. But it doesn't have the death penalty in the federal uh, criminal justice system, and so they were, we were better off with them being prosecuted under state law. But in this, and, and I have a lot of respect for Bobby Rush. He, he is, he's been fighting injustice oh, yeah. his whole life. Of course. And, and he could not be nicer. Every time I talk to the man, he's just one of the mm -hmm. nicest people. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I voted no, I went over to talk to Bobby, and I said, Bobby, this bill had a life sentence on yeah. it, and now it's got a 10-year max. Which didn't this seem is, like a whole lot. It's not. In Texas, that would be a third-degree felony. Mm -hmm. uh, third-degree felony for conspiring, participating. So uh, he said, well, you know, I had the life sentence on, and I said, what happened? It, and, and by the way, some people said, well, you should have amended it. The Democrats brought it to the floor for yes. a vote, uh -huh. having changed it at the last minute, and they brought it under suspension of the rules. You're not allowed to bring any amendment. Okay. It's voted straight up. So that was a problem. And then uh, for the federal government to usurp the, the criminal power of the state, there has to be a federal nexus. There's got to be some kind of federal connection. And I felt like that connection should have been made more clear what it was otherwise it's more vulnerable to struck down and if somebody's participated in a lynching and you convict them number one it needs to be more serious than 10 year sentence but number two it needs to be a solid enough law that it will survive on appeal so somebody doesn't sure. flip it down the road so i guess this was more of an act of symbolism if nothing else but did any of your congressmen conservative or liberal come up to you and say come on louis i mean just flip on this or whatever help us out actually no, a lot of them were saying this is the right vote to vote no. It's not serious enough uh, penalty. Uh, and actually, there were a number of other Republicans that voted no. Democrats that were concerned about it not being a tough enough punishment uh, knew that they could not afford to vote no on it mm -hmm. without having their party come after them in their own primary. So the Democrats were voting yes. Uh, there were, I think, five Republicans. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, I'm sorry, this was uh, most everybody voted yes, yes, but there were a number that voted no and then flipped their vote, and they were telling me, look, yours is the right vote. This is ridiculous for it to be brought with language like this, 
but we will not be, our constituents will not give us a chance to explain and we'll be beat up and called racist. That's my point because the deal is we had a discussion in the newsroom about this and I just kind of glanced at it and I thought maybe I'm wrong, but I'm thinking Texas law is tougher is. than most U.S. law and that's what government was going for and people are so knee-jerk nowadays, they pretty much started attacking you. Yeah. So before we move on, I just wanted you to be able to defend yourself or basically yeah. say- And let me tell you, Bobby Rush said, you're right, it should have been a life sentence, but I, they required that I change it before we voted on it so that it'll pass in the Senate. Right. But he said, I respect your integrity on this. We have another uh, segment with you. We have one minute in this one. Let's get started now on the coronavirus. So pretty much, are, are we handling this okay right now this week? Democrats really pushed back against the president saying, you didn't do enough. We've been called flat-footed. In about right. 50 seconds, what do you have to say about that before well, we take a break and come back well, and talk about well, it? Well, don't forget, they were saying when the president said we need to restrict people coming in from China where this may have come from people accused him of being a racist mm -hmm. how dare you restrict or people the coming border. in and now now that he's saying we have got to be careful on the border, there you go again, being a racist. No, he's trying to protect the country. So if you restrict people coming in to protect America, then people say, oh, he's a racist. And if you don't restrict him and they say, see, you're not taking this seriously enough. So it's a it's a political football and they're not being fair about where they throw it. Yeah, some are saying the Democrats are using this right now as a cudgel against the president mm -hmm. being political. Uh, AP actually did a fact check a couple of days ago defending what the president did and we'll talk about that when we come back in just a couple of moments from right now we continue our conversation with congressman gomert in a couple of moments from right now watch meteorologist carson Vicroy weekday mornings at seven on fox 51 good day this is the chevy silverado with the world's first invisible trailer invisible trailer Hop in. Silverado offers an optional technology package with up to 15 different views, including one enhanced view that makes your trailer appear invisible. Wow. That's pretty That's sweet. Cool. Yeah. Where's the trailer though? <laughs> or get a total value of $7,000 on this Silverado Texas edition without optional tech package or enhanced invisible view. Plus, current competitive owners get an additional $750 cash allowance. Chevy drives Texas. Find new roads. Earning on Daddy Clear. Don't touch it. Don't touch it yet. Let me get the big one. This one? No. This one? Yes. No. The big one. They're all the same size. With Freedom Unlimited, you're always earning. Let me get them all. Let me get them all. I can't decide. It's the darkest time of the year. Headlight savings time. And if switching to a pair of Sylvania bulbs could protect your precious cargo, wouldn't you? Working with Mike Bloomberg was one of the most empowering experiences that I've had. It's important to talk to the people who know him personally. I worked for him for eight years in City Hall. I've been working for Bloomberg for 27 years. 25 years. Almost 30 years. There's nobody that I respect more and felt more respected by. Mike believes excellence is not defined by gender. Mike builds a culture that advances women. He's the first woman ever appointed to be counsel to the mayor. He expects excellence out of everyone, but he also provides the kind of support that allows you to be that person. Mike called to tell me, you should be proud of what you've done, and your name should be on that project. He has faith in you. He believes in you. It was about always showing up and doing your best. I always knew that he had my back. He was raised by an extraordinary woman. She supported him all along the way, and that's very much a part of who he is. Mike supports women. He promotes women and he respects women. I'm Mike Bloomberg and I approve this message. Welcome back. I'm Neil Barton, along with our studio guest this afternoon or this evening, I should say, Louis Gomer, a congressman of East Texas. Thank you for being with us. We went to break talking about the coronavirus, and again, I wanted to send, spend some time on this. The Associated Press this week did say, because Democrats were saying that the president cut back the CDC, and that's why we're having trouble, but actually the Associated Press, which is not always on the president's uh, no, wish list or Christmas card list or whatever, they said, no, the president never cut the budget at all. In fact, right. the budget was added to by Democrats. Sure. And so there was no budget cutting at all. In right. fact, the president said a couple of days ago in the news conference, uh, we'll spend what we need. Yeah, so. and, th and that's going to be bipartisan. So what's being talked about on Capitol Hill that we're not hearing here? What have well, doctors told you? Well, I heard from a number of health care providers, and uh, they're 
they're concerned that people may overreact mm -hmm. and cause a great deal of problems. It's flu season, mm -hmm. and as, as somebody said, it's like, uh, look at it as flu season, except we don't have a vaccine or an inoculation. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you know, people say flu shot. Well, we don't have a flu shot for this, so there's chance you could get it. And, uh, you know, some people are saying, well, there's 0.5% uh, uh, die, have died from to get it compared to uh, two percent in China, but we don't know. They're not. They don't get the good health care well, uh, we do. Uh, yeah. But they say just don't overreact. Uh, you know, wash your hands. Be careful. You know, don't be around people that may be contagious. So you know, be careful. Yeah. But I don't think we all need to go no. around wearing masks. <laughs> I say in the newsroom all the time. Let's cover this. It's very important. It's very serious. But let's not go overboard and let's scare cover people. this let's and inform. cover your mouth if you're. Yeah. Coughing. Exactly. And, and, and give them one of those. Exactly. Okay, so wasn't it that uh, Speaker Pelosi also said perhaps we. Should should take some money from the border and send it to the uh, coronavirus. How do you oh, gee. Uh, I mean, that is one of our areas of danger. And we had our first U.S. case where they don't know where the uh, where the flu virus came from. And uh, we know that people are coming across our border. The Ninth Circuit had a decision just in the last couple of days that says, oh, the president can't make people wait in Mexico for their case to be adjudicated. Well, that was a three-judge panel. So that but the president flipped. has changed the Ninth Circuit, though. He's really yeah, changed that. Yeah, he has dramatically. But we, you should not take a dime away from the, the border. Mm -hmm. That needs to be even more carefully uh, patrolled. And, I, Neil, you know, I've been down there all hours of the day and night. I've been surprised on the Texas-Mexico border how many Chinese people I've seen coming through. And, and they indicate they're from China yep. when, they're, when they're stopped. Which brings me to this now. Talk about the board and everything else. Bernie Sanders, right now, he seems to be the front runner for those Democrats running for the presidency. Uh, to me, and again, this is kind of fun about being where I am. Uh, with sports, you can make predictions, and it doesn't matter. In politics, you can make predictions, yeah. and no one can get after you with that. It looks like he's going to be it unless Biden makes some sort of a last minute run. Does it look that way to you? What's the smart money on Capitol Hill? I guess Hill? it's hard to be objective because I just can't believe that American voters would think giving up our freedom to go to a socialist government would is the way to go when it's failed you give up your freedom you have a big brother no middle class it's just hard to believe that after the fall of the Soviet Union Venezuela failure every time it's tried giving up a freedom in Cuba for heaven's sakes I, it's just hard to believe that's where we're gonna go so I can't help but think well, that hello, it, everyone, I don't think back. Joe's gonna do it I think the impeachment hurt Joe Biden too badly but it but uh, perhaps Bloomberg or, or one of these others will have a shot. Give me 30 seconds, 30 seconds on this because if Sanders gets the most votes and they do a brokered convention and oh. drag out 500 super delegates, I don't want to say it's going to turn into Chicago in 1968, I'm but concerned. those who are Ber Bernie bros are not going to be very happy. And I'm telling you, I'm worried about, I'm worried about what may happen. Well, it, it's because you're a well-educated person, you know what's going on. That would be a I watched, huge concern. I watched the 1968 convention. I was a kid. Yeah. I watched when everyone said the whole world is watching. The whole world is yeah. watching. And so I just kind of wonder, could we have that? Could we have some I sort of I think that's a possibility, but there'll be people trying to prevent it getting that far. How, how is a Biden and Sanders doing in Texas, you think? Well. The young people are loving the idea of socialism, mm -hmm. and that is what is so very shocking. Now, this really um, has amazed me so far. For our voting season now, for early voting, we've had extremely high numbers in Smith County and Cherokee County. What does this mean to you? A lot of people have really voting early. Yeah. Well, and you look at how many of those have been Republicans. It's just record numbers. And so, uh, and Brad Parscale is uh, the president's, uh, I guess he's called the campaign manager now, but he was telling me they've been doing surveys of these tens of thousands of people that come to the rallies mm -hmm. and that there may be 20% of those around that 
didn't even vote in 2016 and yet here they are out standing for hours and hours in lines and then another about 20 percent did not vote for Trump but they're for him now. Let me ask you what is going on with John Ratcliffe because a couple of months ago he was nominated for director of national intelligence that all fell apart but today President Trump nominating him again I want to know a couple of things first of all just in case Trump will lose Texas will lose a very almost be a, a lifetime contract with the citizens of District 4. Radcliffe would, would be out because of that. Why would they take that chance? Because he's pretty mm -hmm. much seated uh, in District 4 of Texas. Why would, why would the president want to take that chance? Uh, well, I think he w would feel that uh, a Republican could win that, but that John could have a real contribution in that role. And what President Trump is doing right now, and I've talked to him about this, you know, trying to help, but get people around him that believe in his vision for where we need to go and get out the deep staters. And I told him, you know, he, you know, one of the problems like President Bush had was figuring out who are the ones that He's are on under my, yeah, and because they all stayed low and you never knew who was leaking who was hurting you but with uh, Trump derangement syndrome people keep raising their heads They're, oh so you're one you're one you hate me you hate me okay now I know well the time may have come because I was reading before you came tonight doing some research for interviews some uh, senators now have said you know what Radcliffe may be the right guy at the right time because the man running the uh, national intelligence right now is an ambassador to what Germany and so he's only an interim and so Radcliffe may be the guy so it looks like this may work yeah, I, well, I hope it does. John's a good guy. So 15 seconds, good, anything you want to say to the constituents before you go? You no, know, I think uh, people just got to get out and vote, and we got to have people making sure the rules are being followed during that voting. Thank you for coming by and come back again. Thank you, Neil. It's you nice to have a chance you. to spend some more time with oh, you yeah, and, and the wonderful. people at Thank home. You. So, Trent, uh, some uh, time spent with you now at the news desk. Thank you, Neil. Thank you, Congressman <laughs> Louis Gomer, for stopping by here at Fox 51. And coming up here at 9 next, not your typical type of therapy be what one nonprofit in Texas is doing for children with disabilities. It's a great story. Stay with us.